right? All right, let's get started. All right, Bolo Buddies, this is the final video from when I took my friend to the Goodwill Bins with me and I spent $111. Um, there's two other videos that you guys can check out to see what else I found. My cart was completely loaded. Plus, I also had a bag full of stuff that she sourced for me, and I have a video on that, and we will talk about that later on. So we're basically just going to dig through the bins, and I'm going to let you guys tell me what you see that I missed. If you can timestamp what you see, if you think I missed something, timestamp it in the comments. That would be incredible. I did pick up this little lovey plush, and... Um, I've got that listed. So the screenshots that you're going to see popped up are items that are currently available in my eBay store. So what I do is I collect the items from the bins and then I bring them home and I list them. And with this batch, it took me quite a while to get everything listed. So that's why I had to put it into three separate videos. Um, but anyway, the screenshots are my listings. If it says sold, that means I have sold the item. Otherwise, the items are still available in my eBay store. So um, yeah, we're going to have a good time here looking through the bins. I did pick these up and they sold super fast. They are uh, double-sided uh, letters by VTech and they're replacements. I always pick up those replacements. I do really well with them. A lot of times, um, if somebody has it saved, they will sell quickly. Um, I don't know if you know that on eBay, you can save searches. And same with on Mercari and Poshmark. Um, I know, well, I'm not sure about Poshmark, but I know Mercari, you can save searches and then you'll get notifications when those items come up for sale. So if you sell, have something that sells super quick, it could mean that you underpriced it or it could mean that somebody had it in their save searches and it became available and they just bought it quickly. So it could be either thing. Let me know if you've ever had a fast sale and you started doing extra research because you're like, oh my goodness, did I sell it too cheap? I have, I've done that before, definitely done that before. So on this sourcing trip, again, I spent $111 and I found so many fantastic items. You're definitely going to want to check out those other videos, but um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I have been reselling since 2005. I was a full-time clothing reseller in the beginning, retail arbitrage. I'd go into like discount stores and buy stuff, clothing at a discount, and I would resell those items. This item right here I picked up, but I gave it to my husband because he kind of likes to dabble in coins, so he's going to hang on to that for now. And if he decides he doesn't want it, I will list it for sure. Um, I was picking it up either way, either to sell or to see if he wanted. Um, board games, I will stick these in my cart. I will then look them up. A lot of items get put in my cart and then they get thrown back into the bins depending on how they comp out. Um, I do a lot of bread and butter. I'm not afraid of bread and butter. Those are my items that I sell for $35 or less that are easier to find. But... Um, Board games, you know, they have to comp out pretty good for me to pick those up. And sometimes I part them out depending on what the game is. So if I find a caribou game and it is um, incomplete, I will definitely part that out. That right there was a uh, swimming, uh, like a life vest preserver for a kid. And um, I've actually got those before at the bins and I sold another one. So I was like, I'm going to pick this up. I know we're coming into winter, but um, that's okay. I'm a long tail seller. I'm okay with waiting on things for the right season. Like I will list Christmas items in the summer. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh, completely fine with waiting. This guy couldn't find any comps. So I do have him priced high at $81 or best offer. That's my sale price. Um, he does like uh, makes sound and he like shakes. So he's a vintage Halloween item. So definitely price that one up. All right, we are going to keep on digging here. And I might have to wait until next Halloween for that to sell. We shall see. Um, I do have best offer on all of my items and I do charge shipping. 
So if you guys have questions about that, um, I know everybody does it different and there's no one perfect way to do things. Um, I believe that there are many successful resellers and we all do things different and there's lots of ways that work. So just because you see me doing it one way does not mean that that's the way you need to be doing it or should be doing it. This item right here was a box of Duplo Legos, but it was incomplete. So um, I went ahead and listed just the parts that you see in that photo. All right, so one thing that I do find in this video is a bag and it is a grocery bag and I've talked about this before. I love looking in bags. There was a recent video I did where I found a huge Ziploc bag of um, hair barrettes and stuff like that. And that's in another one of my Goodwill Bins videos. But at the end of the video, I unbag the bag and show you guys everything in it. And I'm gonna do the same thing in this video. This bear is super cute. It's like a stuffed plush pole toy. Oh my goodness, just adorable. That is available in my eBay store. You can see my cart is getting loaded. And there will be some shots of my friend who is not a reseller. Um, this is her first time at the Goodwill Bins and I thought she was gonna be bored. If you've watched my other videos, you've heard this story. But I thought she was gonna be bored. So I was like, hey, why don't you like fill your cart with items for me and then I'll buy those items and I'll do a video on the box. They are big money. I did pick these up. See the big green ball there? I'm gonna probably sell that as a replacement part. I haven't done anything with them yet. I think that's a piece of Tupperware and I'm probably gonna get a hard time from Noelle Farm Girl Scavenger because she loves selling Tupperware. Me, I don't like to ship it, so I don't typically pick it up, but um, she just does, her, she sells it major and she has a video where she talks about Tupperware to be on the lookout for. And um, definitely check out her channel for information information, information for videos with information on um, like categories. So uh, she did one on Tupperware. She's done it on um, ephemera. She just did a how to on um, like different listing tools and comping out things. So um, check her out for tricks and tips for sure. She is definitely a bolo finder and I will link her down in the description. All right, so back to the bag of items that I find. I will do an unbagging at the end of the video. One of the items has, actually two of the items have already sold out of that bag. And then I show you how I parted out the rest of it. So really fantastic find. But um, really don't show it to you when I'm digging. I just see it and throw it in my cart. So um, some of the toys you'll see me pick up will be things that I pick up and I will make lots out of them um, with things that I already have. So if I don't pop up a listing, it means I either threw it back or I'm gonna use it in a um, lot or a bundle, toy box, or something like that. So that was a little Paw Patrol vehicle and I do have one listed in my eBay store currently. Um, I think I actually have two different styles for Ryder and he's from Paw Patrol. So I always pick up the Paw Patrol figures some of the vehicles I pick up, some of them I leave behind. It really just depends on which vehicle it is. And those are, there's a lot of them on eBay. So that's where branching out to Poshmark and Mercari um, can get you more sales for sure. So I start my items on eBay and then I cross post to Mercari and Poshmark with List Perfectly. There's a video in the description that shows you how to do that. Um, and if you're interested, you can use coupon referral code BOLOBUDDIES, all one word, and that will get you 30% off your first month. So you're going to see that I am definitely a dig to the bottom of the bins and pick up all the small toys. Um, I'm the toy collector. I'm like, these are not going to go to the landfill. Like, I can put these in a bundle. I did pick up this huge super soaker here. Okay, this right here, I picked up the gingerbread thing. And it ended up, um, the zipper on it's broke. So I had to price it a little bit lower. Otherwise, it would have been much better. Um, it comped out pretty good. But unfortunately, that zipper was broken. So the super soaker, I put it in my cart, but I comped it out. And it was really big and awkward. I would have had to have built a box. So I left that behind. 
I did pick up this party Avengers. Um, it's like for birthday parties. I figure, um, you know, parents sometimes probably look on selling platforms that may do better on Poshmark. Actually, a lot of times, um, Poshmark and Mercari are more hobby sellers that are just doing it to spend their money on that platform. So I want to make sure I get that one cross posted. It's just a bread and butter item, but again, something that people use every day, more of, um, I need this instead of I want this, you know, people are having birthday parties and they need to complete their set. So they will be looking for those things. This egg is super, super cool. It is vintage. Um, it, I don't know if you guys are familiar with these, but uh, definitely be on the lookout. Uh, they are a bolo item. Some of them are long tail. Some of them sell quickly. Again, it depends on the design and um, just what somebody needs for their collection. Pair of pantyhose. Anytime I find pantyhose that are vintage, new old stock, I pick them up. Most of them are bread and butter, but if you've seen in my past videos, I sold... Um, Oh my goodness, it was like over a $500 sale for some vintage pantyhose. They were more stockings and they were really, really old. Um, but somebody came in and scooped them all up for over $500. So you guys should check back in, check out that what sold video. It was pretty fantastic. I think it's the one that says I'm greedy on the front. Let me grab the thumbnail for you. Okay, there's the thumbnail. She is greedy. And there's a whole story behind the stockings, the pantyhose that um, I tell you guys about. And yeah, well, you'll just have to go watch the video to hear the story. But anyway, I felt like uh, some people might think I'm greedy <laughs> based on the situation. Oh my goodness. So um, yeah, check out that. I'll try to remember to link it down in the description, but if not, you can just search it in my store. It's the one with all the money behind me because I made tons of money on those pantyhose. I don't know what that is. I don't think I picked that up. I think I left it behind. Maybe I should have grabbed it. It looks kind of interesting. Kind of looks like an Imaginex toy or an Avengers or Marvel or something like that. Always look in the boxes. You never know what you're going to find. Um, go check out my hashtag Ben's Bingo video and you are going to see I open up a box and it's like a generic branded box and it is full of a name brand item. All right, I did sell this. It was a major bread and butter, but I just picked it up on a hunch. I was like, it doesn't weigh much. Somebody might be looking for a teacher gift. And I'm going to tell you that thing flew out of my store and it was only like five bucks, but it flew out of my store and I probably paid like a quarter for it. So I'm okay with the bread and butter, you know, it all adds up and it's different things in your store and an active store is going to bring more people into your store. So uh, keep that in mind and this little elf already sold again. I might've priced it a little too low. I did an auction and it only got one bid at $14 and 99 cents. Super cute little knee hugger. Um, you definitely do not want to put elf on the shelf if it is not elf on the shelf. So um, if it's just the little knee huggers that are felt, do not use elf on the shelf or it will get removed for a policy violation on eBay. Um, I have a whole series of videos where I talk about um, Vero's and policy violations, things that have happened to people in my Facebook group. So I will continue to post those on my channel, but they are current items that are being removed from eBay. And that is one that was current or recently mentioned in one of my videos where somebody had used the word elf on a shelf for some vintage knee huggers and they got the item removed for, I think it was a trademark violation. Okay. There's my bag. Oh my goodness. It's full. That's so exciting. It was such a good find. Um, so you'll see me unbag that at the end of the video. I'm also going to show you a video from Rachel Strickland at the very end where she talks about um, a certain brand and how to, how to know if it is authentic or not. So stay tuned for that as well. And definitely sub up Rachel Strickland. I will link her down in the description. All right, we are going to keep on digging here. Here's another one. I did put this in my cart. Um, somebody, I believe, had picked out the train already, so I went ahead and left that behind. 
Uh, maybe I should have grabbed it. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. Would you guys have grabbed it? Just those are the bigger ones. They're bigger than the Duplos. I've been doing really good with the Duplos on Poshmark. I mean, really good. It seems like I list Duplos over there in big lots and they just sell. And I'm going to show you an example um, later on of a sale that I had of Duplo Legos on Poshmark. And I recently had another sale on Poshmark. And you can see that one in my hashtag Ben's Bingo video. It was a great sale. It was over $50. I won't tell you how much. You got to go watch the video. All right. That little baby doll was really, really stained. Um, in another video I show you guys, um, it was in one of my what sold videos. I picked up a baby doll kind of like that with the cloth body and it was branded um, on the neck, but it had lots of scuffs and stains and it's, I, I still picked it up because it was branded and it sold. I couldn't believe it. These are um, from the Wizard of Oz Mega Blocks. I only found two of them, the Witch and the Tin Man. And here is my friend. She is over here um, looking for stuff while I'm looking for stuff. And she is just, I mean, having a ball. I wasn't sure if she was going to like it or not, but she actually loved it. And she has come up to the bins with me two other times since then. So you will see her in future videos. Um, I actually took her to the one um, in Zanesville with me. I had never been there and we actually came up to this one and I, it was the rotations were really, really slow. And I'm like, do you want to go to the one in Zanesville? So we drove down to Zanesville and I was not real impressed, but I do have video footage and that video will be coming in the future. I didn't buy a whole lot, but I'll definitely make some money. But um. Yeah, totally different um, environment, different feel to it, different layout, different way they rotate items. So I will talk about all of that in that video. So stay tuned for that in the future. And again, I told you guys, um, I'll show you guys her walking out with a full cart. She bought a whole bunch of stuff for herself. And then she had a bag of stuff for me that um, I listed. And I showed you guys that video, which surprisingly, I have been doing so well with the items that she picked out. It kind of cracks me up. Every time I sell something, I message her and I'm like, hey, look what I just sold. And um, she's probably like, I should be a reseller. I'm really good at this. So anyway, she did a really great job. She found me some great stuff. She knows I like to sell toys. So most of the items were toys. All right, we're going to keep digging here. Again, if you guys see something you would have grabbed, timestamp it. Um, and if you're watching, make sure you go to the comments and look at those timestamps because it's a great way to learn. Um, I'm telling you what I source for, but everybody sources differently. So I may not pick something up, but somebody in the comments may mention it, and it's another way for you guys to learn. So you can use that timestamp. You can go back in the video and see exactly what they're talking about. And you may agree with them or disagree with them. It depends on, you know, what your business model is, what you source, if you like bread and butter, if you like big money. Um, I would say at the bins, most of the items that I find are bread and butter, but I have definitely found some big money bolos. And... Most recently, I have found some really fantastic items. So uh, those will be in future videos. Um, super, super excited about them. I, I just can't even believe I found the items. Um, this here was kind of a bad buy. I'm just going to say that. But it might sell. I did list it even though it was a bad buy. And uh, a lot of times I put things in my cart and I don't comp them and I bring them home and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to list it. Somebody might be looking for it. It might surprise me. A lot of times I'm actually surprised at some of the things that end up selling that I think are a bad buy. So um, it's like I donate it or I keep it. Now she did find this thing and I tried looking it up um, as I was before I did the video. I can't find anything like it, but um, I don't really know what it's called. But I believe it's like little miniature books of different states. And she ended up just buying that for, um, I'm not sure what she's going to do with it, but she bought it for herself. I think she bought it. You know what? I need to ask her. I think she bought it uh, because I ended up finding, it was missing a couple books and I found them. And I'm like, here's the missing books. And I was all excited that I found the books, but I don't know if she ended up buying it or not. I, that's so weird. 
I think she did. All right, we are going to keep digging here. I know she bought a block of wood. You see that wood right there? She was planning a baby shower for someone and she used the block of wood as part of her decorations. So she really like, she did a great job finding stuff for personal use. It was really cool. She's like, I think I can use this here. And uh, I took her up another time and she bought a chair. <laughs> so that was cool. A chair. She's like, do you think I should buy this chair? I'm like, I mean, if you want to buy the chair, <laughs> go ahead. I'm like, it's kind of got some stains on it. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, but I can get it dry cleaned. I'm like, she's like, do you know how much a chair like this would cost? And I'm like, yeah, probably a lot of money. And she's like, and I can get it dry cleaned and it'll look really good. I'm like, yeah, it'll look really good. <laughs> you guys, I've never, um, I don't know, it was a cloth chair, just <laughs> like an office chair. All right, I did pick up this. I was kind of excited about it because it was vintage, but it did not work. So I went ahead and put the battery compartment up because I'm like, hey, I can at least make my money back on the battery compartment. You guys, that thing sold so quick. It was just a bread and butter, but hey, you know, um, I made my money back. All right, here she is. I have no idea what she's talking about. Um, this little um, Barbie uh, chair, she's helping me find Legos right now. So whenever uh, the bin has like Legos, I look for the Lego. For the, If it says Lego, I pick them up. And I have a whole tote and I just throw them in the Lego tote when I get home. And if I find the minifigures, I will list them separately and from time to time. And But usually they just go in the Lego tote and I'll get to it someday. It's in my money pile, right? We'll just say it's in my money pile. But you know, $1.89 a pound and you know how much Legos weigh. Like I am not leaving those Legos behind. This is an American Girl hockey stick. Of course I pick that up. All right, there she is handing me off some Legos. It's so funny because um, the people at the bins that watch my channel, they know I like toys. So when they are there, if it's something they don't want, they'll be like, here, you want this? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Um, I just had a guy um, come up to me the other day when I was there and he's like, you like these, right? And they were the um, peekaboo baby balls, um, which who knows when I'm going to get that stuff listed. That'll be in a video like probably in six months. No, I'm kidding. I'm still working on the garage. But um, yeah, he handed me all these peekaboo balls and I was so excited because I love selling those. Uh, I find the peekaboo blocks and the peekaboo balls. I did pick up that, but I haven't listed it yet. It's just kind of sitting to the side. I don't really know. I think it's kind of an off-brand generic thing. It was probably a bad buy, but I was like, well, maybe I can use it for something. It is a lock. I don't know what I would need to lock, but <laughs> oh my goodness. How often do you guys throw things in your cart and you're like, why did I buy this? Um, I do it all the time. But anyway, I think that was a little Imaginex figure. You know what? I think I listed that. Let me go grab it. Yeah, here it is. Mrs. Freeze. And that one actually comped out pretty good. Now this one right here is a major bread and butter, but I just had to pick it up. It was complete. Um, they're eggs. They're like for kids. Um, it's an educational toy for like sorting and colors and um, matching up the shapes. So cute, cute item. Pretty saturated. Uh, might sell better on Mercari or Poshmark. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. If the sell through rate is really bad on eBay, look at those other platforms, those smaller platforms. All right. So the process, that's my Tin Man. So I showed you guys that um, pop up earlier. So the process is I go to the bins, I buy the items, I go home, I list the items, then I pop up all the screen shares on the video, and then I go back and I do the voiceover. So when you guys see a video, it's not like I just recorded and here's my video. Like there's a lot of going through the video once, adding the screen shares, then doing the voiceover. So um, when I said, oh, I forgot that screenshot, that's what I was talking about. Um, I didn't post it, so I had to go back and grab it. You know what? I think I got that baby. Did I get that baby? I think I did. Let me go look. All right, so this is like a Lego catalog, and then I did get the baby. So here's the screenshot for the baby. It is super cute. It even has like the original hospital band on it. All right, so... Um, 
I just saw her cart and I saw a couple items that I've already sold that she bought for me to sell. So super fun. Um, yeah, again, here's what that video looks like. All right, so I was hoping I was going to strike it rich right there, but either somebody else found the item or it was just an empty box. Sometimes I do grab those empty boxes because they are great for shipping items. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, they're lightweight, and if you sell jewelry, picking up those things are great little presentation boxes to ship your items in, especially higher dollar stuff, you know, that you pay a little more for. It just gives it that nice little... Um, I have presentation, I guess, is the word I was, what I already said. Um, I can't remember if I ended up getting that game or if I threw it back. If I got it, I haven't listed it yet. Some items, like, I just get overwhelmed and I have so much stuff that I picked up that I always have just, like, a few things left over that I'm like, okay, I'll just lot these up with something else. All right, she's down there digging. I'm over here digging. Um... She definitely did not have to be entertained. Um, she was just doing her own thing. She was showing me stuff. She did pick up some things and she was like, what do you think? And I'm like, eh, that's pretty heavy. I don't think I would get that. Um, there was a really cool old toolbox. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would have been a good buy. I'm guessing they would have probably given us a discount on it. I don't know if it would have sold well or not. There is a game, but there's no game. And I know sometimes you can sell the cases. Um, maybe I should have looked it up because it did have the manual on the inside. And I have sold um, empty game um, cases with the manuals. There's that old, uh, is it a toolbox? Fishing box? I don't know. I think it's a toolbox. What do you guys think? Would you have picked that up or left it behind? She actually pointed it out to me and I'm like, ah, I don't think so. But sometimes you go back and you kind of second guess yourself I'm more thinking I'd have to find a box for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. The big stuff. Shipping the big stuff. It takes me forever. Electronics. Another thing that I do not pick up on a regular basis. I actually hardly ever pick them up. My husband, on the other hand, he loves picking up like um, old receivers and uh, turntables. That's kind of one of his things. And he uh, is always looking to upgrade what we have. So we have an old school um, record player that we use and it's in our living room. It's more of one of those, um, what do you call it? Freestanding, it's a bigger one. It's not just like a small record player. It's pretty cool actually. But um, I think he got it in an estate sale, gosh, a long time ago. Um, let's see what else we have. I'm gonna keep digging. Some roller skates, I left those behind. Would you guys have grabbed the roller skates? Just so much stuff, you guys. Can you imagine how much goes to the landfill? I mean, they pull these items to the back and they're still full. I did not get this listed before Halloween. Um, I've just got it with my stickers. So that's another thing. Um, stickers, magnets, and Legos. I always pick them up, but I never seem to get them listed. Um, yeah, but anyhow, I have a whole pile of stickers. I'm like, they weigh nothing. I'm definitely picking up any stickers I find, even if they're um, pre-owned. Like, as long as they're not, like, stuck to something. I've even bought some that are stuck to something. I showed those in another video. I listed them. I don't think they're going to sell, but I just had to try it because I know that a lot of times people will um, get stickers with certain things on them to craft with. So it was kind of like one of those, I'm just gonna see if I can uh, sell this or not. So, so far, it's a no-go. I will keep you guys posted. Sometimes learning is just trial and error, you know? You just try it, and sometimes you sell something unexpected, and sometimes it just sits forever. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's people that bring chairs and they bring blankets to cover up their carts. I mean, they are into it. I try to keep my cart right beside me, but uh, they've been putting the bins closer together so we can't get our carts in between. So it's really kind of tricky um, because I'm kind of one of those that just grabs and throws everything in my cart. 
and checks later. And it's really hard to do that when your cart is at the end. So I like to kind of sneak in after everybody's kind of done looking and then I can bring my cart with me and not be in anyone's way. But if it's a new bin that's coming out, there's no way you can bring your cart in there. It's just too tight, too many people. Tell me in the comments, what is your favorite thing to source? All right, here we go. I've got another, um, I popped up the screenshot again. All right, so here's one of the things that she picked up for me and you'll see this in that video. And what I did is I parted it out. I listed the horse and I listed the saddle separately. So, so far those items have not sold, but again, I have sold a bunch of items that she did pick up. So she did a really good job. She found a bitty baby, an American girl bitty baby. I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, yeah, so really great stuff she found. I would definitely let her source for me again. And I paid for it, you guys. I didn't like make her source for me and pay for it. <laughs> I paid for it. So I didn't know what all I was getting, but it turned out really good. I've definitely made some money. Super fun to let somebody else source for you. I challenge you to let someone else source for you and make a video on it. And let me know when you make that video because um, I definitely want to watch it and I will definitely share it out. Um, because I think it's pretty fun. Uh, so I challenge you to uh, find a friend or a family member, someone who is not a reseller and have them source for you. <laughs> it's risky and you have to pay for it. Don't make them pay for it. All right. Here's that Lego set I showed you guys earlier. And here is my total. Um, and this is again in actually four separate videos. Her cart was loaded. All right, you guys, now I'm going to take you into what so was in that bag. this is what was in that mystery bag. This is made by Lego, so that is awesome. This one right here. And you guys, if they're Lego brand, they will be marked inside that little hole on the head. Um, I know somebody just put on Facebook that they had an item removed for not being authentic Lego. Make sure you're checking them um, because there are knockoffs. That guy, got this little guy. So I'm guessing these are Duplos because they fit on these bigger blocks. So what this was, was just a uh, bag, like a grocery store bag from the Goodwill bins. And I just saw, really I saw these and I don't normally pick those up, but I must have seen like this or something that made me pick it up. I can't recall now. So, um, so far I'm really happy because I had no idea these were going to be in the box. So let's see if there's anything else cool. It's a nice little accessory there. We've got a American Crafts pencil. We got a turkey leg. So I will probably put, um, this is a nice big, uh, piece here. 2010. I don't know what it goes to. No idea what that goes to. This is a broken Power Ranger. That's cute. That's probably a Duplo, if I had to guess. A car. Make sure it doesn't have red. Oh, another one of these. Oh, it's Princess. Um, is that Sophia? I think that's Sophia. She's got a little bit of stuff on her. I'll see if I can get that up. Oh, I bet. I wonder if this is her horse. Oh, that would be cool. Oh, this can go with that. So there's some of these. I don't know what that is. But these will sell. Um, so I don't know how I'm going to lock this up yet. But I will figure it out. This girl's in here, but her head is like, it's in a little bit of rough shape. I don't, I don't remember what she's called. I'll probably just put her in a toy lot. I don't know what that goes to. It looks like the top of a castle or something. Is that? Nope. Thought maybe that was on there. So these here, I'll probably put in a lot. These ones with wheels. I'm going to look up some of these Lego figures, see if there's any value in those. Oh, look here. Looky there. I'll probably sell these two together. 
Look how cute it is. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, this is a good one. Here's another flower. Oh, what's this guy? Oh, an owl. An owl. And it says, what does that say? Winco? Or W-E-N-N-O maybe, 2015. So I'll look that up. Sometimes these minifigures, they'll surprise you. And then sometimes they don't. So um, this is a smaller Lego set. All right. That's what's here. All right, Bolo Buddies, uh, Rachel Strickland was kind enough to do a video on how to identify if a Lego is actually a Lego or if it is a knockoff. And I also included this in one of my Vero videos, so you may have seen it before, but if not, here it is. Thanks for watching and sub her up. Not every building block action figure is a minifig. Minifig and minifigure is actually a copywritten term exclusive to Lego. And there are subtle differences, especially in the quality, that separate and differentiate a Lego minifig from the competition. On this modern minifig, when I take off his helmet, I can look straight down on top of his head and the brick is going to say Lego. Every single modern Lego says Lego somewhere on the brick. His legs say Lego. Turn um, on the bottom of his feet and just underneath his toes here, you can see Lego, Lego. It is written absolutely everywhere on modern bricks. But let's, let's take a look at this guy. He's vintage and his head looks completely different. I think that this was in a uh, an attempt to uh, aid in a non-choking hazard, but these minifigs, their heads don't say Lego anywhere on them. They are pretty quintessentially Lego and pretty easy to differentiate, but that's what you're going to look for in the top of a vintage piece. But once I take his head off, it does still say Lego here. And when I take his legs off, again, we still see Lego branding here. Even underneath his toes, there is no branding though. So um, there are a few differences, but going back even as far as this vintage piece, we're still going to see Lego branding everywhere. But what about this? Who is this girl? She's a Lego friend. And believe it or not, she's still a minifig. Um, I'll take her hair off and show you what the top of a Lego Friends minifigure looks like. You can see it says Lego in there. She has lots of cool accessories. I dress this girl for the beach. And um, in on the bottom of her feet, she will say Lego. So you're still going to see that Lego branding consistently with um, the Lego Friends series. But they look completely different. Um, save for those U-shaped hands that are consistent between Lego Friends and the Lego minifigs. Now you might see something like this girl and think something looks off and her legs don't bend. She has to be fake. If they have short legs like this, they're not necessarily fake. And if the legs don't bend, she's a child. They even have Lego babies. And I think those came about um, sometime around 2016, I think, or was it 2006? They came out with the Lego babies. But these Lego kids have been around for a little while. If they have short legs and they don't bend, look for that Lego branding. You can still see it in her toes. And she is still an official Lego minifig. She has the branding there. Her hair is even going to be branded on the inside. She came with a Christmas set. What about something as weird as this? This head is completely different than anything that we've seen, but rest assured that if I looked inside, I would see Lego branding. I see Lego branding here, and this is actually one of the blind bag series that they had of little rock star animals. So you're still going to be able to consistency, consistently sorry, see that branding all over the Lego minifig, and you can only say minifig or minifigure when it is truly a Lego branded item. Again, they have a copyright on that. They had uh, quite the trial in court uh, one year with a company called Z uh, Zuru, who was making knockoff um, Lego-like minifigures and calling them minifigs. And it would be in your best interest just to not use the term minifig on eBay, not only to avoid a Vero, but to avoid a return. Because if someone buys that thinking it truly is a Lego minifigure, and then they get it and see that it's, you know, maybe a knockoff or it's a 3D printed item or something like that, Trust me when I say a true Lego collector is not going to be happy with that purchase. So I hope this helps in a little minifigure education for you. Huge shout out to Rachel Strickland for putting that video together for us. Be sure to subscribe to her channel. 
Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching. Check out some of those other videos I mentioned and let me know down in the comments which item I found was your favorite and be sure to timestamp those bolos I missed. Thanks for watching.